example that you can learn to do in Adobe Illustrator is to now is I'm going to open a font, one that I just downloaded and installed on my Mac. Um, I, and I'm going to show you how to manipulate it. So I'm just going to do a four by four, uh, four inch by four inch space for now. doesn't really matter what size you do. I'm going to say create and there's my blank canvas. I'm just going to choose fit on screen here. All right. I'm going to go ahead and choose my typing tool, which is uh, you can actually just type the letter T on your keyboard watch and uh, it'll select the typing tool. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click in this area here. And by default, um, it'll choose the one of the default fonts or one that you used recently. You can go ahead and click in here and you can see there's all the different fonts you have installed on your system are displayed over here. So I just installed one on my system called Grenzi, which I like because it kind of looks like an old timey medieval sort of font. Uh, I'm going to increase the size a bit here. And it's just thrown some some Latin in there. Lorem ipsum. I don't know what that means. Sounds like a person. Anyway, I'm going to change it to my name, which is Matt. Uh, let me increase the size again. I want it to fill the space a little bit better here. Double click it and increase. Here we go. And I'll move it around. Maybe center it here. All right. I'm going to teach you how uh, right now um, it's a font. I can, you know, I can come in here and edit it, uh, you know, mit if I wanted to. That's not my name. Um, and you'll notice there's a direct selection tool, just like we have in uh, when we create a, a primitive shape. You know, you can create a primitive shape and then use your direct selection tool to modify it in some way. You have the direct selection tool, but when you try and use it on a font, it, it doesn't really do anything. And that's because although fonts are vectors, which means I can zoom in infinitely on them and then they'll always maintain their beautiful quality uh, and not pixelate, um, it's not in a form that I can modify it yet. And so what we want to do is we want to change it from being a font that can be edited into a, um, a vector that can be ma manipulated like a primitive shape. So I'm going to go up here to object and I'm going to choose expand. And uh, it's going to ask me, do I want to do the object and the fill or whatever? I'm just going to say OK to the default options here and let's have a look to see how it reacts. I'll say OK. Oh, you know what? I had this selected as well, I think, at the same time. So let's just undo for a sec. Object, expand, and OK. Now let's see what we can do. I'll go to my direct selection tool. And you, now you'll notice there are all sorts of anchor points on these letters. And so now I could go ahead and, uh, and do something cool. Um, now I can grab these anchor points and change them. So you can make some pretty cool or wacky or strange looking fonts. So I'm going to go ahead and just start grabbing some of them, changing them around. Uh, I can click on the anchor points. I can make them curve if I want to by clicking the anchor point first and then coming over here and choosing a curved anchor point. And then I get these handles, just like if I was manipulating a primitive shape. And there's all sorts of strange things you can do. Um, click that one. There you go. You can actually remove anchor points too. So if I click on this anchor point, I can click over here. It says remove selected anchor point. And then what it'll do, it'll just create an average line between the two previous anchor points, just like that. So there's all sorts of crazy stuff you can do by moving these around. I can even pick up a whole shape if I pick it up by its, um, uh, by the sort of interior here. I can drag it around just like that, do the same. And I can come up with a pretty crazy looking font for my name. When I go back to my um, selection tool, instead of the direct selection tool, I can move this all as a unit again. I can come, come up here and change the fill. I can change the stroke, which is the outline. Well, that's crazy and too big. And that's crazy to small. There you go. And so you get an idea of how you can manipulate a font and create something pretty original. This is often how um, companies who 
who have interesting logos um, modify their fonts to make their own uh, special corporate logo. They'll start with something that's um, a font that everyone has, and then they modify just one or two things to help create their brand.